This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Hey, what's going on, friends? It's Jonathan. Welcome back to another JC production. Today, we're going to be talking about Mac OS and in specific Mac OS Catalina. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks that I really think you guys are going to like in order to get the most out of this new update, as well as what you need to do to prepare your Mac for this update, because it may not be for everybody. So the first thing you need to do is find out if your Mac is even able to receive this update. And I don't mean in the traditional sense like when it comes to hardware requirements or recommendations I mean in the sense of whether or not you are depending on a bunch of 32-bit apps because Mac OS Catalina does not support 32-bit applications in order to make sure that you don't have a bunch running or you're not relying on a bunch let me show you what you need to do so what you're gonna do is go into the little Apple menu here go to about this Mac then click on system report go all the way down where it says software and look for where it says legacy software. Click on that. And then right here is going to be your list of 32-bit applications. As you can see, because I'm running Mac OS Catalina, I have none, but if you are running some, they will appear right there in that list. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do in order to prepare your Mac for Mac OS Catalina is back it up. That way you can always resort to a backup if it's not working out for you or there's just some problems. In order to back up your computer, you're gonna go to the system preferences here go under Time Machine Backup, and then select the drive that you want to perform the backup to. So if I wanted to make the G Speed Studio XL my backup disk, I could select it and then push Use Disk. And the next thing that you need to do is make sure that you get rid of any junk files or unnecessary files. And that's where this video sponsor comes in, Clean My Mac X. So this is Clean My Mac X right here, and I'm gonna leave a link for it down in the description, and it's going to clean up my system really easily with a click of a button. All I have to do is go to Smart Scan and just scan my files. It's going to find out what it can clean up. It's going to determine any threats for uh, possible protection measures, and then anything it can do to speed up the performance of my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and let it do its thing. So there we go, everything has finished and you could see all of what it was able to do right here. What I really like about the smart scan feature is the fact that I can schedule this to be ran, you know, a certain amount of times per month or week. And it's going to give me a notification to remind me to go ahead and do it. Um, I can also go in and do specialized cleanups such as system junk, mail attachments. I can clean out trash bins. You have malware removal. You have um, some privacy stuff going on here. Um, optimization, maintenance. So this is an all-in-one suite to make sure that your Mac is going to be running at you know peak performance and never slow down or have minimal slowdowns throughout the life of your Mac. And this is awesome. When it comes to Mac OS Catalina, there are a ton of new features that are really going to help you in your day-to-day -day task. And these are gonna be 10 tips and tricks that I really think are gonna benefit you and you're gonna like. The very first thing is how to sign a document or a form using your iPhone versus having to use a mouse or a trackpad on your Mac. Let me show you how to do it. Obviously, in order to sign a document, I have to have a document to sign. So I went ahead and downloaded one right here. We're gonna launch this into preview, tap on tools, go down to annotate, and then signature, manage signatures, tap on create signature, and then iPhone. Now on my iPhone, it's going to pop up for me to input my signature. So I'm gonna go ahead and input it, tap done. And there is the signature right here. Tap on that, and then I can drag it right there. Another great addition to Mac OS Catalina is inside the stock mail app. You now have the ability to unsubscribe from spam or junk mail or things that you get routinely like newsletters. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing we're going to do is pull up the mail app here and we're going to look for an email from like a newsletter or an automated service. So like right here, I have Champ Sports. We're going to tap on that. And right here at the top, it's going to say this message is from a mailing list. And all I have to do is just tap unsubscribe. And now I am unsubscribed from that mailing list. And hopefully this is gonna help me clear out my inbox and receive less junk mail. Number three is inside of Safari and it's actually picture in picture. And this is a great addition to Safari and something that I've been wanting for a while. In order to enable it and use it, this is what you need to do. In order to do picture in picture, you have to use Safari. Unfortunately, it's not on Chrome yet, but I can't wait for Chrome maybe or possibly to implement this feature. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into Safari. I have a video pulled up here. We'll hit the play button. 
Up here in the navigation bar, there's a little speaker icon. Just press and hold that, go down to enter picture in picture, and now you can resize this window however you want to. You can drag it and you can, you know, snap it to a corner just like so. And now I'm free to go about and do anything else I want to do and I don't have to have Safari open. Number four is how to use snippets inside of reminders versus having to go in and manually input a date or time. It's really convenient. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, a snippet is the ability to type out what you want versus having to input it manually. In other words, if I wanted to add a reminder to meet a friend on a certain date at a certain time, it's going to translate that and input it for me versus me having to go in and input that time or date myself. Let me just show you. So we're gonna add a reminder and we're gonna say, meet Danny at Starbucks uh, on 10, 25 at 3 p.m. So as you can see, it's automatically picking up the date and time and it's gonna input that information into this reminder for me and I won't have to go in there and manually do that. Number five is my personal favorite and that's Sidecar. The ability to link your iPad to your Mac or MacBook Pro or MacBook and use it as a second screen and still utilize the Apple Pencil. Let me show you how to use it and th this is easily my favorite new feature. So in order to use Sidecar, you need to make sure that you're running macOS Catalina and also that your iPad is running the latest version of iPad OS. And other than that, it's really simple. As long as your iPad is unlocked and the screen is on, you can go up here to the corner, tap on that, and then just tap on your iPad. And now it's either going to mirror the display of your Mac or it's going to be like a continuation of your display. You can go into system preferences here and then go under sidecar and you can adjust certain settings like you can do the sidebar which will control things like uh, the back button and command and stuff like that. You can also add the touch bar to the bottom and you can enable the double tap on the Apple Pencil. I've been using Sidecar with Photoshop and ultimately it works good, but it's not as good as a Wacom tablet in my personal opinion, but at least it has potential and hopefully it gets better moving forward. Number six is Split View. This is something that I've always used like a third party app for. It's the ability to run two windows side by side without having to manually adjust them. They kind of just lock into place. Let me show you what I'm talking about. But traditionally, I've always used like a free third party app or even a paid one. I think I paid like $1.99 for Magnet and that's always worked for me. But it's just nice to see this inside of Mac OS Catalina without having to download anything extra. To use it, all you have to do is just open up a window and then open up a second window. So I have my Mail and Chrome open here. And then go over to where the Maximize Window button is and just let your mouse hover over it. And then I can move this window to the left and then tap on this one and it'll be on the right. Number seven is really cool. It's the ability to use your Apple Watch side button in order to authenticate purchases or password input. Let me show you, it's really neat. For this example, I'm going to dive into system preferences. I'm gonna go under security and privacy. And then right here in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a lock. This is just the easiest way for me to demonstrate the um, side button authenticator on the Apple Watch. So if I tap on that, it's going to tell me I need to authenticate by using my password, or I can just double press the side button on my Apple Watch, and boom, it's been authenticated. If you have a hard time reading small font or small text like I do, then hover text is going to be a godsend. Let me show you what it's all about. So in order to enable hover text, you're gonna go into your system preferences and then go under accessibility and look for zoom. And then make sure where it says enable hover text, it's checked and that's it. So now whenever you hold down the command button over text, it will actually make it bigger. So I'm holding down command and you can see it's actually making the text much bigger and easier to read. Number nine is a game changer, and that's voice control for your entire computer. Voice control is incredibly useful for situations where you need to control your computer, but say your hands are dirty and you don't wanna to touch your computer because you don't wanna dirty it. Well, this is how you enable it. Go into your system preferences, go under accessibility, scroll down until you see voice control, and then make sure it's turned on. It's gonna add a little microphone in the bottom right hand corner and that's to let you know that it's working. If you wanna see a list of commands that you can perform, just tap on commands and there are a bunch right here. Just you know, get familiar with them and use them and you can also customize them a little bit. 
Uh, if you want to actually silence the voice control, you can go over here to sleep and now it's no longer gonna recognize commands. But here's a quick example at what you can do. So first I'm gonna go ahead and wake this up. Now if I say open Safari, cat videos, search, delete, delete search, delete, delete, delete videos, delete cat, search for cat videos. Show numbers, 27. And there you go. So I just controlled Safari by using my voice. And to me, I think that's pretty next level. And finally, number 10 is not really a tip or a trick. It's more of a how-to since as soon as you boot up on macOS Catalina, you're going to notice that iTunes is gone. So you might be confused on how you sync your phone. And it's as simple as dragging and dropping. Let me show you how to do it. And it couldn't get any more simpler. And I'm happy with this addition. So what you're going to do is go into Finder and you're going to see your phone that's connected to your computer right here. Just tap on that. And then from here, you can perform your... Um, your updates, you can restore the phone, you can back it up, you can also sync your files. What's really great is if you tap on this little arrow right here and then pull up files, it's going to give you the file structure of your phone so you can look at what you have saved on your device when it comes to the different apps that you have on your phone. And I think that this is incredibly useful and it's one more step in the right direction when it comes to having a file system or file structure that we can access on iPhones. So to give you another example, I'm inside the Filmic Pro app right here. If I were to take one of these files and then drag it to my desktop, I am now transferring a Filmic Pro file from the Filmic Pro file structure off of my iPhone onto the desktop. Well, friends, that does it for me in this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comment section, what was your favorite Mac OS Catalina feature? For me, it's Sidecar. I really have been wanting this for a long time, and I'm so happy that Apple has implemented it without the use of a third-party app. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content just like this, and I will talk to you beautiful people in the next video.